Hi, my name is Ken Lasseson. I wrote the microbiome prescription website, and today what I want to do is take a look at using it if you are dealing with salicylate sensitivity. Now, first thing is PubMed has absolutely zero studies on the microbiome of salicylate sensitivity. It's never been studied, or if it's been studied, nobody found any report. However, we do find that um, with the statistics and science from the uploads, that there are apparently strong patterns. So I'm going to walk through and show you how you get suggestions to hopefully improve suicide sensitivity. Again, this is all mathematically model, AI, gobbledygook, but it does generate suggestions which in all probability would improve your sisyphus like response. All probability, not guaranteed. Okay, so we have here a sample and a of a person, and what I'm going to do is go up to Explorers and look at Symptom versus Bacteria Summary. And it gives you this horrendous list. And now I'm going to type in Solicify Sensitivity, and we find there are 50 relationships between different bacteria and salicylate. We only have nine samples, but we do have some very significant Z scores, uh, as in highlight these are statistically significant samples. Okay, we click here, nice view, and voila, we now have a list of the bacteria found over the whole population of people reporting social sensitivity, and this person, this person specific example. We in fact find 39, which are very strong association, are the 49 identified, and six, which are theirs, takes up to 42 out of 49, 80% hit, which is quite acceptable. Um, this is the first time I've looked at the sample, so this is all fresh to me. And we see things spelled out there. So here is with, we can sort of a Z score. This one particularly being low is very significant. This one being high is also uh, very significant. Some of the names you may find very strange. We do find a few of them. And what is interesting is that of the 40, let's see, we have high, we have we have some which are middle peaks, um, and then we have um, low. So you could custom tune it to eliminate the middle peaks and go for the high and low extremes there, but whatever you check here goes into a customized sample which you can get suggestions from. So it only will pick the items which are checked and this is basically items which are not um, very strong or unchecked, items which are strong or checked. Um, so we just go and we click here, and it takes you right over to the suggestions page, a simple as that. And, uh, and you can now proceed to do suggestions. I'm going to bump them up to 30. And 30 show suggestions. And what we find here is we find a variety of things. The ah, that strange looking thing is actually um, an extract from seaweed. So that presents an interesting thing because traditionally you would think something like seaweed could be high in salicylate and therefore you would never try it. In terms of your microbiome, it may be what you want. Um, high fat diet, cholesterol results. Again, both of these are things which are generally perceived to be high in salicylates. Um, there. And you go down, etc. things to avoid, or inulin. There. So it goes down. All of the items are scaled from whatever value they are computed to, to out of one. So it's easier for people to understand. It goes down here. And we don't have any interest. We have no probiotics suggested, which implies that all these no probiotics suggested, which are on the um, to take list. We do have some which are suggested, which are not to be taken. Um, if those they're not the fact that there are zero suggested probiotics means that. First thing, cut off all the probiotics. They're not helping you with social sensitivity at all. Or at least the mathematical model suggests not. And then we have 
what we have here we have vitamin a there melatonin some a lot of these vitamin b vitamin i has implications uh, of being salicylic some of it because of the fact they are flavonoids and you could make the misassumption that they are salicylics naively salicylate is a specific chemical in food so some of these if you do it and check the ingredients it should be good so that's basically it uh, and we add as for for 30 or so and that's what we have here you can increase the list let's go back and do there we did ask for probiotics there's no probiotics to this we asked for 30 and that is how we got here and let's do a check there and just in case and we look again and now our commercial probiotics let's see what we have there we do have some which potentially could help um bifidus infidus is seems to be about the only one that has a positive impact which is as the name would apply expect a probiotics commonly found in infants which is makes sense in conceptually and then things that have negative impact um and generally considerable number okay so that's basically it it's a short walkthrough of how to get the information again what we are doing is we're using citizen science results. It's only nine samples. Let's get the numbers right. There's only nine samples up there. The prediction would be much better if we get more and more samples. We work with what we have. So that's beginning. If you haven't done a 16 s sample, I suggest you do so. Upload the data. Add in your symptoms being satisfied sensitive. It will help better identify the bacteria that could be playing a impact on it they these bacteria may not be necessarily creating sensitivity they may be creating the chemicals that spark that results in this like sensitivity um indirect cascade but we do find very significant cisco association okay i'm going to shut up there and get this uploaded